to the borders issue. Talk about it in your book a little bit. And this was the dispute we saw with Bill O'Reilly that was one of the best moments I've seen in TV in quite a while. Were you feeling that during that? You know, yes, I, I was, it was quite something. I, I'm still feeling the reverberations, as is Bill. But just, just quick four points. Immigrants get blamed for a lot of things that just statistically are not true. They get blamed for the rise in crime. They get blamed for uh, uh, economic turmoil. They get blamed for terrorism. They get blamed for health problems, all based on canards, all based on false reporting. Right, well, we'll get to those. Can I bring you back to the borders? The border, do you, do you I favor, th can I yeah. ask you, Rado, yeah. do you favor carefully controlled borders? Yes, you do. I, do. I, I think that you can't have a sovereign nation without carefully controlled borders. You need an inventory of who's in the country. I totally <laughs> agree with that. Okay. That's why I back President Bush, John McCain, and Ted Kennedy's comprehensive immigration reform bill, because it had a border enhanced security aspect, and it okay. had compassion and an understanding of our immigrant tradition also for those who are already here lured by decades of the combination of lax enforcement and the promise of jobs. Okay, well, let me talk to you with uh, John Morganelli, who's the DA of Northampton County. John, if you stand up with us. Uh, I think Araldo may know of you, and you're one of the leaders in enforcement against employers. Speak to that issue, and you might have a question or comment for Araldo. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Mr. Rivera, it's a pleasure to meet you. I, I would tell you this. You, you mentioned about crime, and I'm a DA now for 16 years. And I can tell you that it's not that people see that the immigrants are committing all the crime, but we have a lot of crime being committed by illegal aliens. And we've had a lot of American citizens killed at the hands of illegal aliens. And we have enough of our homegrown criminals here. We don't need foreign criminals coming across that border illegally and committing more crime. Now, as far as... But wait a second. Goes, you, can't, you can't let that statement well, go unchallenged. No. Hold on. Hold on. There's two points I want to make. 97.5% of the population of local, state, and federal prison are citizen-born. Number two... A study by the Public Policy Institute in California just found that Mexican immigrants between the ages of 18 and 25 are eight times less likely to commit crimes than citizens. Listen, it is, a, it listen, is false let me to suggest you, that they are responsible for your about, crime. About 25% of our federal prisons are filled with illegal That's immigrants. That's absolutely untrue. Listen, That's, I is, did the you go to I, I, Look, Have you seen the GAO report? I, that I've is, seen, it, to you to say that to your constituents, you should be ashamed of yourself. That is they're, absolutely they're on unsure. violent crime, they're on their in deportation uh, issues. That's not true. We have a million. There are 55,000 55, illegals in what prison and a population on? of 2.3 million. That's he's challenging fact. your source and these statistics. What can you say to back well, it up? Uh, the, the information that I have comes from studies that were done. What study? St Please. Center, uh, the Center for Immigration Studies have looked at this. And here's the thing. I cited Ronaldo. the here's General the Accounting Office study, have, the last have, study, the 2005. How about the MS-13 gang? Which there are problems. 20,000 illegal aliens just in there. Los Angeles, and they're moving west. You, you made a statement. And here, Raleigh, here's the thing. Mr. Why district we, attorney, wait a minute. Mr. Well, elected district attorney, you say. made a statement why that was we, false. Why should, we, why should American citizens have to put up with foreign criminals coming here, killing American citizens, driving drunk like those poor girls killed? Let me finish. In Virginia Beach, we don't need to have foreign criminals coming across the border. Philadelphia has and lost 500,000 residents in the last 20 years. 500,000 have left. The Philadelphia, the last time I looked, was being called by the most pejorative expression I have ever heard, Philadelphia. And if you examine those statistics and you examine who's perpetrating those crimes and who's being victimized by those violent crimes, it has nothing to do with but, immigration, but, sir. But listen, here's the point, Geraldo. We understand we have our homegrown criminals, but when people are being killed That's at the your hands problem. of people who do not belong here, these are people that would have been alive you had these foreign the, criminals not been here. You divert the attention from your true They'd problem, be alive. the deep-seated socioeconomic problems that this city and other cities have, the cities that have had these spikes in, uh, in violent crime, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, none of them have and, and, anywhere and near the Thank you, John, very much. Geraldo, thank you. We're going to take a break. It's the great immigration debate on the Big Talker 1210. It is a great immigration debate here on the Big Talker 1210. We're live at the Philadelphia Daily News Inquirer building. Thanks to our partners, the Fence Guys, and also the Philadelphia Daily News. We'll be starting to take questions from the audience. Ed Palladino, our associate assistant PD, the man standing in the black suit looking threatening, will be ready to take your comments. And I'll come around and we'll put you on with either Araldo or Joey. Just direct it to one or the other or the voice of reason on this panel, Stu Bykovsky. Uh, Araldo, Joey, I was looking for an area searching the wisdom of Solomon. 
and this is hard for me to do to find agreement. Usually talk radio doesn't do that. And I'm wondering if we all three could agree up here that streamlining legal immigration, Aralda, we'll start with you, is the thing that's crying out to be done as a first step. The first step was to de-racialize our immigration policy. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, Dom, in 1924, right. we passed the National Origins Act, which specifically mm -hmm. made racial quotas part of the federal law. Uh, Northern Europeans got 76% of the visas. By then, Italians were cut to only 3%, Greeks to 1.5%. The perception that you were less white in the eyes of the immigration officials is what affected the visas. There were no local visa, uh, legal visas mm -hmm. for Latin Americans. I would love to see a process where the, company, where the country recognizes what is in its best interest. We are a vibrant, vital mm -hmm. uh, mosaic. We take the energy from the four corners of the earth. That's what makes the United States special. Uh, to harness that energy, that that uh, the vigor of the uh, the of diversity, that's what will make us special. But I do believe, and there are plenty of experts that can show us how to streamline yeah, it. Yeah, so this should have. be no big deal. Stu Bykovsky. Uh Currently, if my figures are correct, uh, the origins of uh, immigration uh, is 2.5 percent from Africa, 20 around 25 percent from Asia, 51 mm -hmm. percent from Latin America, 15 percent from Europe, Canada, Australia. So basically it's 85 percent non-white, 15 percent white, basically. Now th this was actually given to me by uh, a fellow I ran into on the street who seemed shocked by that percentage. And when I asked him, what do you think the percentage of the, the world's population is white versus non-white? And he got it like that. It's a fair delineation. And I, in the course of this what discussion, what do you mean by that? Fair. I mean it, it's apportioned correctly. I think you would you would give uh, open the oh, doors. Oh, now, 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 I mean, yeah, 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 now. I, uh, there were discrimination discrimination in the past. It was in the past. And for this discussion, I hope each time you use the word immigrant, you either use it as legal immigrant or illegal immigrant, because there's a huge difference. Right. We're, I think most of us are Okay, let me ask Serrano, are you resistive to that? Do you feel when we say illegal immigrant that there's something mean-spirited about that, too? I, I, I think, well, when you consider, I mean, to use the expression illegal alien, which mm -hmm. I find more offensive, much more okay. offensive than illegal immigrant, what is the crime that they are committing? The crime is uh, unlawful presence. It's a federal. It's the lowest level federal misdemeanor, punishable right. by up to six months in prison or a $150 fine. It is the lowest level federal crime you can have. Mm -hmm. So to to brand them as criminal when you have rapists and murderers and all these other you know criminals who are out there is kind of a stretch. But okay, so I don't make the distinction. I'll grant you that they are here. Their presence is here unlawfully. But I think that as long, in my view, as long as you are compassionate toward the 12 million who are already here, and we move forward from this point in agreement to streamline immigration policies, to enhance border security, to have a colorblind uh, policy that's whatever is in the best interest of the nation and in unifying families, as the Pope and the President agreed last week and signed a document to that regard, just last week, they were together Wednesday in the White House. Then I'm, I'm all for it, and, I, and I, I think there is a distinction, but I would, by compassion and some uh, mm -hmm. passing immigration right. reform, obliterate the need to make a distinction. All right, Joe, would you be about that, streamlining it and legal immigration well, part of the event? These gentlemen have all statistics, so we'll, we'll just go past right. that right now. All, I don't care what country you come from. As long as you come in here legally, that one, we can have you clarify whether you have a disease, whether you're a criminal right. background. We ha I have no problem with that there. We have to secure our borders. But he wants to leave... Well, we got 20 million, 30 million here. Okay, we'll pat you on the head and we're going to make you legal now. You get all these benefits. What do we say to the people that have been waiting 10, 15 years to come in here? They already paid their dues. They, are sim they want to simulate. They learned our language and culture and willing to do the jobs that everybody claims nobody wants to do. All right, the reason why they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it for slave wages. And that's what's happening right now. So these people, we come in. Now, you're going to give them amnesty. What do you think happens to 20, 30 million amnesty people? We got, now they're all legal. American citizens. Hey, no more $3 an hour for me or six, whatever it is. They're going to unionize and they're going to be right up here. What's the business people going to do then? That's the only reason the business people are interested right now. Their own profit. It's all about money.